All right, here's our video. Escape velocity of the Milky Way. In other words, what would it take for us to escape the Milky Way? And it's not just something of just traveling, going to the edge of the Milky Way. Which, by the way, it's kind of silly because the edge of the Milky Way is enormous. It would take us with our technology now over 800 million years just to get to the edge. Now, we're 26,000 light years away from the center. And light, light is fast, right? We can't get anywhere near the speed of light. So let's just get our pen going. So here we have beautiful edge of our Milky Way, the galaxy we live in, and its diameter. That's right, it's diameter over here. The diameter of the Milky Way, it's about 120,000 light years. So it would take light 120,000 years just to cross it. Just imagine what it would take us. And the center, the center from where we are, is about 26,000 light years. And light goes 186,000 miles per second. Extremely fast. We can't get anywhere near that. If you if you snap your fingers, right? I've done this before in other videos. Light could travel around the world seven and a half times. It's enormous speed. But let's just say that we do have a ship that can get to the edge of the galaxy in 800 million years from now or more. And we do have four ships out there. We have Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Pioneer 10, and Pioneer 11. We'll talk about them in a minute. But even if they got there, they have to be going a certain speed to escape it. So what is escape velocity? Let's talk about that first. Get a little arrow here. So it's the minimum velocity. You know, the speed. Velocity is speed with distance, speed with direction. So it's the minimum velocity needed for an object. I should use a different color, right? For an object to escape, to flee, to escape the pull, the gravitational pull. Get it in there. Will it fit? Yes. The gravitational pull of wherever it is. So, for example, let's give let's get a clean page here. By the way, here's a another snapshot of our Milky Way. And we'll get our pen going. So here's here's where we are. And from there to the center, by the way, there's a supermassive black hole in the center, Sagittarius A. So that's about 26,000 light years. Put L-Y, light years. So from here to here, and it's hard to estimate that, but we're, we're looking at perhaps another 40,000 light years or more. And this distance, so if we'll, maybe we'll use white. So this distance, if we did have a ship heading this way, all right, we'll look at, this is what we're talking about, about 800 million years or more. If we had ships going there. All right, so let's make sure we have our pen. Let's look at the escape velocity in different planets. So on Earth, in case you're wondering, that's where we live, right? Escape velocity on Earth is about 24,840 miles per hour. You need to go that speed in order to escape Earth's velocity. So if you don't go that speed, you're not going to break three. Uh, you know, so if you're just heading, if you go under that, let's say, you will create, you will just not be able to cross the orbit. Eventually, gravity will take you back down. So we're creating a parabola here, which you may be familiar with in algebra, right? And that speed is, that speed is Mach 33, just to give you an idea of, and Mach is the speed of sound. So you got to go 33 times the speed of sound to escape Earth's velocity. And to put it in perspective, let's say the F-22, the F-22 Raptor, that can go Mach 2 one of our fastest jets. 
We did have a fast jet, the S uh, jet, the SR seventy one Blackbird. That was a very fast jet. That went Mach three, actually Mach three point two to be exact. Nowhere close to Mach thirty three that you need. So the F twenty two Raptor, the SR seventy one, any of these, you know, fighter jets we have, they cannot break free of Earth's orbit. And there's other things to consider too. You know, the very fact that they are not carrying their own oxygen. All right, let's clear that out. Clear it out. So let's look at the moon now. Let's say the moon. The moon has much less gravity. So the moon, to escape the moon, you need to go 5,322 miles per hour. So when the Apollo program, when they landed on the moon to escape, they had to get that speed. But actually, they never reached that speed to leave. So when they landed, Apollo 11, let's say, for example, it had the Apollo lunar module. Put that in there, the lunar module. That's what took them off the ground, the LM. And, you know, you probably know it as the Eagle. The Eagle has landed. And when it did take out, take off, you know, they wanted to go home, it was only going 4,093 miles per hour. So it wasn't able to escape the moon's orbit. Didn't have enough fuel for that. But it did get into the orbit of the moon and it rendezvoused with the command module, which was in orbit. So as Armstrong was on the ground, Michael Collins was in the command center, and Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin and, my, and um, Neil Armstrong were on the moon and in the command module where the Eagle, the Eagle will rendezvous with the command module and the command module then would do a trans-Earth injection burn. Anyway, we're getting away from the topic. But if we wanted to leave the moon, we can either go 5,322 miles per hour or do what Apollo, um, that the Eagle did, get close to that, get into orbit, and then rendezvous with a command module, which would use these injector burns to get out of Earth's orbit and head to Earth. So let's look at some others. Let's clear this out. So... As we said before, we have Earth. To escape Earth's velocity, it's 24,840 miles per hour. And we said the moon before. Much lower gravity, 5,322. Let's put Mars out there, smaller than Earth. We're going to be heading to Mars maybe in 10 years. Who knows? 11,186 miles per hour. And let's say Jupiter. Now, Obviously, we cannot land on Jupiter because it's a gaseous planet. But if we could, it would be 132,700 miles per hour. Enormous amount you need for Jupiter. And our sun, which we can't land on the sun either, a million, 1,381,600 miles per hour. So we did mention there is a... We have four ships outside of our solar system. We have Voyager 1, which is going the fastest. And it's the furthest away. It's going 38,000 miles per hour. And it's about 15 billion miles away. It's nowhere close to being at the edge. In fact, it's not even heading to the edge. So 15 billion miles to give you a perspective on that let's say from the sun you put the sun over here to pluto you all know pluto you know that that's about 3.7 billion so voyager one is way out there it's not in our solar system anymore it's in interstellar space and it's just heading out there now if it was heading toward anything the closest star, for example, for us is Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri would take light four years, but it would take Voyager 1 if it was heading to Proxima Centauri, which is not. I'll put it over here. That would take about 73,000 years. But it's not heading there. It's actually heading to a constellation, Ophiuchus. Let me clear this out. We'll write that where it's heading to. Spell this. Ophiuchus. And Ophiuchus is actually not, it's closer to the center of the Milky Way 
than the edge. So in, in essence, Voyager 1 is actually heading closer to the center than the edge. Whereas Pioneer 10, and let's clear this out again. Well, let's keep it one. So the, we have Voyager 1, which was launched in 1977. Voyager 2 was launched in 1977 also. Then we had ones before that, the Pioneer missions, the Pioneer 10 and the Pioneer 11. They were launched earlier, 72 and 73. And these four are outside of our solar system. And only one and two, Voyager one and two, are still working. So we, we lost contact with Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11. But of all these four, Pioneer 10 is really the only one that's heading toward the edge. It's actually heading toward constellation of Taurus, which is closer to the edge. But Voyager one is going the fastest. So let's hypothetically say that Voyager one gets to the edge of the arc galaxy in 800 million years. And here's Voyager 1. Notice that gold plate on there it has the sounds of Earth and pictures of Earth. If there's any inter, there's any alien species out there and they figure out how to use it, perhaps they'll get a glimpse of what Earth was like in 1977. So let me let's make our little solar system here. Well, Voyager popped up again. All right, so if I made this, this is our solar system, the Milky Way. That's exactly how it is, right? And we have another galaxy, a bigger one, Andromeda. It's actually heading toward us. But anyway, Andromeda to the Milky Way, for looking at the distances away, it's two and a half million light years. So it would take light two and a half million years just to get to Andromeda. So when you look at Andromeda in the sky, and you can see it on a clear night, you can see this like milky patch. That's how Andromeda looked two and a half million years ago. And if you think about how long it would take us, if it's taking light two and a half million years, it would take Voyager, if Voyager somehow escaped the Milky Way, it would take 44 billion years. Enormous amount of time. But of course, it's never going to leave the Milky Way. Even if it got to the edge, it would never leave it because it won't escape the velocity needed. I'll go, we'll go back to this and eh, make sure we have our pen going. So like we said before, like here we are, and let's just say it's heading to the edge, the shortest path of that edge. And let's say it just takes, you know, we'll just say 800 million years, which is... Perhaps a little more than that. So 800 million years just to get to the edge. But once it gets to that edge, it needs an enormous amount of speed just to escape. And let's get our pen going. And what it would need, it would have to go about 552 kilometers per second. And that's 1,237,837 miles per per hour. That's how fast it's. And it's not going anywhere near that. It's going 38,000 miles per hour. So it doesn't have enough speed to escape it. And by the way, the equation for that, if you want to find the equation, escape velocity. You need to take the square root of 2 times g, which is the gravitational constant, times m, the mass of the Milky Way, divided by the radius of the Milky Way. And you'll get this answer. So the gravitational constant, let me, let's clear this out and we'll do it again. Let's write it over again. So again, you have the square root of two times the gravitational constant. And the gravitational constant in simple terms and all, I'll give you the number on it. It's just the strength of gravity between two objects. So the strength of gravity between the center of the Milky Way and Voyager 1, let's say, times the mass of the Milky Way. And we're going to divide that over the radius of the Milky Way and get, then get the square root. So G, again, we said is the gravitational constant, which you'll learn about 
you're talk, learning about Newtonian physics, the first physics you really learn. And the gravitational constant, by the way, is 6.6, .6, just giving you a rough estimate of it, times 10 to the negative 11th. The mass of the Milky Way is estimated to be 8.98 times 10 to the 41st kilogram. It's an enormous amount right there. And the distance from the center, from we're assuming now that the Voyager 1 is 26,000 light years, or, or roughly, so it would be 2.5 times 10 to the 20th kilometer. We take all that. And we'll get an escape velocity of 1,237,807 miles per hour. Of course, it would be a little more because, again, we're saying where we are now, 26,000 light years. But again, trying to get to the edge of the galaxy, maybe another 40,000 light years. So you probably need an enormous amount of speed compared to that. So, uh, and again, like I said, Pioneer, uh, Pioneer 10 is the closest ship that left in 72 that's heading toward Taurus, the constellation of Taurus. So it's, it's the only one getting closer to the edge, even though it's going slower than, than uh, Voyager 1 anyway. So maybe in 800 million years, if you check back on this video, maybe we'll have an update of what will happen. But it, when they get to the edge of the galaxy, now we're talking to the galaxy now, they will just create, just stay in an orbit around the Milky Way since they don't have the speed necessary to break free of that pull from the center. All right, that's our video today.